Hello everybody, welcome back to Dexpose for 2021. I am Christian Chiller, with you as always, where every week, I took a, a short break, but every week I look at the developer experience behind a sort of developer-focused tool. Um, there are going to be some changes to the stream coming up over the next few weeks. It's always nice if you can somewhat arbitrarily make those changes when you enter a new year, but that's not always the reality. And uh, to be honest with you, the new year never really starts until a couple of weeks in anyway. So uh, maybe I've got a bit longer. But um, so for today, it's going to be much the same format. I'm going to spend about the next 45 minutes seeing how far I can get with a developer tool, a developer platform, or in the case of today, an operating system. So Fuchsia, this very, very plain, uninteresting looking website here from, uh, from Google, Fuchsia from Google. Now let's have a read here. Fuchsia is an open source effort to create a production grade operating system that prioritizes security, updatability, and performance. It's a foundation for developers to create long lasting products and experiences across a broad range of devices. And many people for the past, um, well, I guess a couple of years have been wondering what is Fuchsia? What is it going to be? Is it a replacement for Android? It's, it's, it's never been completely answered. Um, and recently, Google opened up Future for contributions. So, um, still doesn't necessarily help people understand quite what it is. <laughs> it feels like they're kind of developing something private in the open. It's kind of unusual. But today I wanted to see what it was like to at least get an emulator going and get that basic developer experience going for those of you who would like to contribute. Uh, I am not an operating system developer, so I'm only going to get so far, but I just wanted to see how far uh, a developer could get and maybe dig beneath the surface a little to see what it might be. So let's have a look. Um, maybe we'll have a quick look at the principles here. I don't know if it tells us much more. Uh, not a massive amount. It's actually built from the kernel up, unlike Android, which is based loosely now on a Linux kernel. It's a, and this has actually been a, an ongoing recent trend, actually, to have operating systems from the ground up again. Um, still really doesn't say very much what it is. It supports a variety of runtimes. No Java there, interestingly, if you're coming from Android. And there's things like Bluetooth, drivers, uh, file systems, graphics, networking. I mean, the, the standard stuff you'd need in an operating system, but still doesn't tell us very much about what it actually is. Anyway. Let's get started. So we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to attempt to get the source code, build it, and then run it in an emulator and see what happens. Um, I won't be able to try it on a device because I am actually using my phone as a camera. So <laughs> it's going to be hard to do. Um, and there's a bit more beneath the surface here, but let's begin. I did already open some of these tabs here. We're going to first get the source code. And helpfully, there are instructions here for, well, two operating systems, <laughs> Linux and Mac OS. Uh, install the Xcode command tools. I already have those. I know that. So, and then we have a bootstrap script that creates directory, et cetera, et cetera. I think this is going to take a while as well. So we might do some more digging whilst this is building. So, okay, let's open up a terminal. I think I will switch into my standard two screen mode here, although there's not a lot to look at right now. <laughs> okay, so where I want to create the future directory. Okay, great. And here is a bootstrap script. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'll take a drink whilst we see what happens. Things are happening. <laughs> Who knows what exactly? It's creating a project, good. 
I don't really know how long this is going to take. So it might be a good idea to come back out of this for a bit whilst I keep an eye on it. So whilst I'm waiting for this, has anyone um, tried Fuchsia at all? Uh, and I suddenly realized how little I know how to spell Fuchsia. Um, let's have a look what else we have digging beneath into the documentation. Um, jury, which is interesting. It mentions this jury thing a lot. I'm not quite sure what jury is. Let's have a look. Google, is it? Is jury from Google? Um, looks like it. Uh, tool for multi-repo development. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, and we're going to have an emul... Oh, no, where were we? Here we go. Update some environment variables. Okay. FX, next steps. Then we have to build. Okay. It's hard to know what's actually happening here with no progress. My CPU fan has started. So that's a start. Jury seems to be doing something. I have unfortunately noticed when I am in my studio slash office that my download speeds are somewhat shaped. Um, I could tempt fate here and turn Wi-Fi back on. Due to some confusing setup here, the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet are actually oh, two different networks. So I don't want to tempt fate by accidentally uh, uh, disconnecting. But maybe we will see. Could be a recipe for disaster, but let's see. Are we still live? I think there was a slight judder there, but I think we're still good. Okay, so that's doing its thing. Let's have a look maybe at the emulator whilst we're here. Things are happening slowly, it's fine. Um, fan is going crazy, <laughs> that's a good sign. Uh, so there will be an emulator. Fortunately, once we've installed and configured and built, we have access to the emulator. Uh, oh, I've just noticed something here that could be problematic. Ah, no, it's an emulator. Okay, I just noticed something about specifying a Kimu, which is a, how you pronounce it, but it's a, an open source emulator. Um, here, Quemu, Quimu, Quemu, Quemu, not sure, yeah, so it's using some sort of version of that, that's good, what's that happening, um, we set a board, an x84, that's fine, and uh, yeah, let's have a look here whilst we're digging around, uh, there is a GUI, interestingly. I'm interested to see what that looks like. Remote development, okay. It's based on the Android emulator. Interesting. Um, I do, well, the thing I find quite fascinating about Fuchsia is all these sort of mentions of things here that without any real context. <laughs> uh, Zircon. Let's see. None of these brand names make any sense either. Oh, it's, a, it's the microkernel. Ah, okay. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, so it's the microkernel. Interesting, okay. Um, so it supports ARM. To emulate, so I'm guessing in this case it would if we don't use Zircon. Uh, not 100% sure, but it's for kernel developers, which is not something we're going to be particularly looking at here, I guess. Uh, let's have a quick look. 
core platform that powers the future. Interesting. Um, okay. I have done some work in the past for not on the Linux kernel, but for some documentation for a Linux kernel project. So I have vague understanding of kernels um, and generally what they do. Uh, I, it's interesting. To, I mean, there is source available. I'm not going to go into the source. <laughs> Uh, oh, I mean, I'm not going to look into it and understand it, but uh, <laughs> we can now see it here on Google Git. Um, okay, it's telling us a bit more here. APIs could tell us a little bit. So there's C and Dart. Actually, Dart would be an interesting one to look at. I have slowly been um, creating a Dart application. Dart is nice. And there's been a lot of predictions that Dart will replace Java. Obviously not on Android. And yeah, this is still the conjecture whether Fuchsia will be actually what replaces Android. Um, I don't know what APIs are available. It might give us a clue as to the sorts of things that... Uh, so this is still taking its time. <laughs> I don't really know how many projects we're expecting. I get the feeling this is going to be one of those episodes where we spend a lot of time building and a very little time actually experimenting but okay that's the nature of the beast um still wonder what the api actually gives access to though this is what we're wondering hmm. and that's what i'm still missing <laughs> telling us how to write API documentation, but not actually find the API. Uh, interesting. Okay. Architecture principles. We looked at this. Updatable is interesting. This is obviously a problem that Google have endlessly had with Android, and they have improved quite a lot, but um, still problematic. So if they build from the outset to, to prevent that problem, it could be interesting. Um, architecture support, we've looked at booting. Yeah. I'd be interested to know driver development. I mean, the fact that there is one would imply that they want to have a lot of support. Maybe. I mean, there's a lot of documentation here. <laughs> Um, graphics. Okay, so this is interesting. We have um, Flutter UI Toolkit for applications, I guess. Magma is a Vulkan driver. Vulkan is familiar. That is the current Android 3D renderer, I think. Magma is to support Vulkan. The mixed metaphors here are getting very interesting. <laughs> And scenic is okay. So this is another option here, and then Escher, physically based renderer. I'm not 100% sure what that means. Um, media, just volume by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. Testing time tracing, and then USB. That makes sense. Bluetooth also makes a sort of sense. Huh. Ah. Things happened, I think, there. Hopefully we're getting closer. Um, let's have a look at what else we have here that could be interesting to us. Setting up hardware. So you can also do it on a Pixelbook, on a Nook. Do not have either of those, but it doesn't look like there's a phone option. So maybe again, we're assuming this is not quite what it's aimed for. Mm. Not a hundred percent sure. Does not specify experimental hardware. These are all again mostly desktop machines. What's happening here? Uh, configuring editors, okay, interesting. Okay, 
FFX, this is something I saw earlier for the emulator. Yeah, well, it's a developer tool, developer workflow tool. Hmm. Banjo. <laughs> so many mixed metaphors here. It does feel like a developer's experimentation project right now. So many different things that you're not entirely sure how they all connect together. But uh, anyway. Um, languages as well. Oh, programming languages. Okay. There is no Java. Very interesting. Internationalization. Good. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's have a look. I thought it's where we were earlier. Ah, here's the reference. Uh, glossary. Okay. Contribute. Roadmap. I wonder if this will tell us very much. Fiddle, very good. Um, C++ bindings. This is not telling us a massive amount about roadmap, really. Anyone can join, okay. Who is joining, though? I mean, we could look into the code base and have a quick look. Documentation, good, contributing to Fiddle, contributing to Zircon, okay. I wonder if uh, things are still happening here. Uh, Jiri is still the main consumer of my CPU. Uh, well, it's gone down a bit. Let's see, maybe something is happening. Um, what I was looking for was, we were there, uh, oh, here we go, it's here, yes. I wonder if we can get any form of mostly Google employers there for owners. Uh, future, future. Don't get too used to digging around uh, GitHub. <laughs> um, let's see. He's mostly, well, it's hard to tell. Google employs largely by the looks of it. I don't really know how to search this to, <laughs> yeah, saw this in that other description, plink plus purple equals fuchsia in your operating system. Doesn't say a great deal. Um, there's patents involved, interestingly. I'm just wondering if there's any non-Google non contributors. Uh, various packages here. I think mostly Google employees. I'm not entirely sure how to navigate this repository to see like commits or anything like that. Uh, yeah. No, Google again. Chromium, interestingly, as well, though, which is a little different. Um, well, <laughs> we're still kind of waiting here. I'm running out of things to fill time with. Um, it's one of those ones where often, like where I do a Kubernetes-related project, knowing quite how long things are going to be, and how long they're going to take is interesting, but at the same time, if half of the experience is building, then we kind of want to go through it. But um, yeah, I wonder if it's worth having a quick dig through. So there's even there's even an official book about future. That's oh okay, interesting. There was. <laughs> um, Looks more like embedded systems, according to this article on InfoQ. I should actually add this to my read list. Hopefully something is still happening here. Things have seemed to have not moved or changed for some time. And I have no real error messages. Uh, Jiri is also not doing very much. Um, hmm. I don't know. Oh no, it's 
No, I'm doing a little bit. We'll see. I don't know. I'm not getting any errors, which is always the worst problem. Um, it doesn't say a great deal, does it, actually? And this book seems to have vanished. Um, let's see. Ah. The book seems to have gone and just become this uh, main documentation now. And I think this is what we're already looking at. Um, so this is kind of where we're already looking. Yeah, that's pretty much what we're already looking at. It is not a science experiment. <laughs> um, and then we have, okay, well, this would have been interesting to hopefully get to. Um, is this in concept development? Let's see. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Interesting. There doesn't seem to be. Oh, I see. No, that's the links there. Uh, does development run run examples? Run. Hmm. That's interesting. This doesn't seem to be docs development. Doesn't actually seem to be in the. Actual documentation anywhere, which is interesting. That could just be I'm looking at an out of date place, maybe. So there is a search. Let's have a look. Maybe it's this. I think that is that. It is it? I don't know. Uh, looks different. Uh, I think so. Now I'm slightly concerned that nothing seems to be happening here. Um, hmm. My fan is still spiking, but nothing is really happening. It'd be nice if there's a verbose mode of some description. Scripts bootstrapping, and we could actually have a look at this script, see what it does. isn't helping me a great deal. Um, maybe it's this one. Show jury. Let's see. Uh, I don't see that. Uh, head scripts. Oh, from there. Hmm. Nothing really seems to be happening here, which concerns me somewhat. And everything's gone very quiet. <laughs> I may have another go here. Let's see. Did we actually get anything? Yeah, there is a folder. We were getting something. 
Okay. Oops. Don't know what will happen if we just run it. Oops, run it again. Let's see. Back to basically the yeah, going through those a little faster because nothing's really changed. And then it's going to make any difference. I don't know. Hmm. Let me have a look at this. Let's have a look here. No. Basically back to the same place. C I P D. Uh, don't know. Not really seeing any way to figure out what could be happening here. Uh, CIPD packages. Not sure. Hmm. Oh, 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 something just moved. Uh oh, now there was a note about this access. Let's have a look. Um, invalid authentication credentials. That's not quite the error we're seeing. I'm not sure. Um, oh, there's a warning message. Let's just double check that. It's not quite the error we saw. Okay, so that's. Looks like it worked, I think. <laughs> okay, let, let's see, let's see. Feature recommends updating your shell script to perform the following actions. Um, okay, sure. I kind of would rather not do this permanently, but we'll just do it for now. And I don't use bash, I actually use um, so was actually, how do you pronounce it? I'm not sure. <laughs> but he's that shell. <laughs> so I'll just add these. Um, does it say where in particular? Nope. I'll just pop it down the end here for now. Oh, change the. Da, da, da. All right, we're getting somewhere. It only took us half an hour. We'll see how much further we can get. <laughs> okay, good. And then source it. You can tell I do this. I don't know. I was about to. There we go. Yeah. Auto complete. Sometimes this crashes my terminal. Let's see. <laughs> or takes a long time. No, that's good. Okay. So, verify. It looks promising. Good. And that looks promising. Good. Next steps. Configure and build. All right. We're getting somewhere. And I can see more of you have joined. You dropped off for the boring part. So that's good. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need to follow the steps. You've done that. To set your build configuration, run the following command. What are these strange pencils here? odd. What are they? <laughs> Weird. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's correct. Oh. Hmm. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Um, so what do we want? I wonder why it's in, I've never seen something like that in pencils before, with a pencil there, interesting. Okay, right. If 
for an emulator, for a device. So I guess we want this one. Do I need to actually be in the future folder? Not sure. We'll soon find out, I guess. All right. Let's see. Although the command above seemed to imply it was looking in the right place, so that's good. Okay. Yeah, anything happening? CPU is spiking. Gun is doing something. Whatever that is. So that's encouraging. Maybe, hopefully. Speed up the build. Okay, so it's ah. Alright, something happened. Good. Um, this is optional, let's leave that for now. Because we're not really gonna be doing it again. And then build. This could take a while. <laughs> Seems okay so far. Okay. It's progressing reasonably well. Things are firing up on the CPU, always encouraging. This could be another point where I need to fill time for a bit. <laughs> What can I talk about? Hmm. I could talk about some non developer things, maybe. I mean, it's, I've been on holiday, so <laughs> haven't done a great deal. Um, oh, here's something I've been playing with quite a lot. Let's just move Windows whilst that's doing its thing. Um, as you might be able to see, I have been using Safari again, but I wanted a cross-platform uh, bookmark tool and I've been using Raindrop, which I'm actually really pleased with. Uh, it's cross-platform. I actually paid for the premium option because I liked it that much. And you can add tags and things, which I'm then using Zapier. I do a lot through Zapier to automate things. So this, for example, I'm bookmarking a potential um, a potential topic for a future expose. And I have a Zapier task that pulls those tags out and adds them to Trello. So yeah, things like that you can do. Also, you can see lots of tags here. Also looks for things like duplicates, broken links, etc., which is also quite useful. I found that I actually pruned quite a few, as you can see. It's not so good with ones behind a login, but that's okay. <laughs> duplicates, it's not all strictly true either, but anyway. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, oops, that's something completely unrelated. What else? Can I mention? Um, what else have I been working on? Um, I haven't really been. I guess she did take a little bit of holiday, so there's not a tremendous amount to to tell you about, really. <laughs> it is only the fourth of January. So, um, I could get a bit meta here. Here we go. Um, so I am using OBS for streaming. This is where it's going to get surreal. Are you ready for this? Whoa! Hello. Um, I was for some time using this Irian, um, but I've been using Droidcam um, recently. But interestingly, Irian has added some of what... So Droidcam is also adding this ability now to have a remote in a browser, um, like remote control of the phone for zooming in, zooming out, and white balance, and, and the, turning the flash on and off and things like that. And Irian is now supporting that too. Um, I just decided to go with Droidcam today. So that's also interesting. Anyway, let's get rid of the meta there. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, this is nearly done. Good, I can stop waffling. <laughs> okay. Hopefully it's nearly done. Sometimes you find these last few things can be the longest and slowest of all. Um, next week on Dexpose will be Apollo, which is not the German optician. Um, this uh, data graph platform, and this will coincide with me releasing the podcast interview I did with uh, one of their founders a little while back. So you can have a look forward to that too. Oh, here we go. 20 bits left, 20 steps left, 20 whatever it is, bits, packages, <laughs> whatever it is left. Okay. Is, 
Oh no. Uh, where were we? We were... Here. Yes. And here we go. We're right. This one has paused for some time. Oh, something's happening. Excellent. I want to be showing something that isn't just my terminal building things for the end of this episode. Okay. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> it doesn't look. It does not look encouraging. Although it's moving quite quickly. Ninja, I also discovered recently. Or, or actually, oh, oh my God! This shows you how how weird 2020 was. It was actually pre-summer last year, 2020. I was working on this Linux kernel documentation project, and I encountered Ninja for a few things there. First time I'd ever encountered it. Uh, I had to keep running Linux emulators to test everything. I got a, this is. I think Rust has anything to do with Rust, is it? Oh, no, it is. Hmm, interesting. Okay. This could take a while. <laughs> I wish you could speed up a live stream. <laughs> I have actually been contemplating pre-recording these instead and not doing a live stream, but I kind of like the spontaneity of the live stream. And I also wonder if I pre-recorded, I'd spend too much time editing, uh, I'd possibly fall behind. I don't know, there's positives and negatives too. Both approaches, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I think this will take a little while. Um, I try not to break up the stream for various reasons, but we may have to. I'm running a little tight to time, and this looks like with... Oof, what's that? 10%? 1%? Done? This could take a while. I wonder how much disk space it's taking up. That's interesting to see. Um, let's have a look. Uh, probably not so much. Maybe. <laughs> well, the fact it's still calculating the size is generally <laughs> a sign that it's quite large. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> All right, maybe this is quite large. I mean, it is an entire operating system we're building here. Okay, yep, it, it's large. It's still calculating. <laughs> uh, wow, okay. Oh, there's a fair bit going on in here. Uh, no, it's still calculating. <laughs> okay. I think maybe because it's changing all the time. And this is taking its time. I don't think we're going to get to the end here. I may have to um, do this in two parts. Yes, I think I may have to do this in two parts. Okay, just for anyone following along. So yes, I think I will have to redo this. This is moving quite slowly. And I have filled quite a lot of air time already. <laughs> and I estimate for the amount of time this might take that um, I don't think I can fill time for that long. <laughs> I yeah, This is all previous builds. So I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference if I do anything with that. So you always have to wait. So. I will sign off for now and um, I will restart this stream when this is done. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for joining me for that. Uh, it wasn't necessarily a brief look at future. It was a time-killing look at future. Um, 
this is why one of the reasons why I was thinking about pre-recording times like this so we could focus on the actual experience and not the build time um, it somewhat varies yeah so I will reconvene the stream um, if you don't make it back for the next installment hopefully you will um, live or later then um, you can find more at twitch.tv slash Dexpose you can also find um, on my YouTube channel which just look for Chris Chiller UK at the moment it's a very old username that I need to change at some point soon or you can go to christianchiller.com and, and find all the previous episodes and things like that too so I will let this keep running and I will restart the stream at an indefinite point in the future <laughs> when I can so for now uh, thank you for joining me on this slightly peculiar episode and uh, whatever you build build it well and I will be back with Fuchsia soon.